Hello students, from this class we will be starting our lecture series on water soluble vitamins. Fat soluble vitamins have already been covered. Now it's time to learn about water soluble vitamins. Namely, we will learn about all these vitamins. Thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, pyridoxine, pantothenic acid, biotin, folic acid, B12 and vitamin C that is ascorbic acid, right? Now, regarding what you should learn from all these vitamins, honestly speaking, we all have learned about vitamins since our nutrition days, since we have taken science, right? Uh, so, mainly we need to focus on the recommended dietary allowances, the dietary sources, these are the basics, right? But the most important thing that is expected from you as a medico are number one, explain its biochemical role. What does the vitamin do? How does it act? What is the mechanism of action or the active principle of that vitamin and the deficiency disorders? What disease will happen if the vitamin is deficient in the body? And in some cases, therapeutic uses. That may not be true in all the vitamins, but some of these have got therapeutic uses as well. So, in this class, we will be discussing the first one that is vitamin B1 or thiamine. So, first, uh, if you want to give the pinpoint answer, what is the source of thiamine, vitamin B1? This is the keyword, alluron layer of cereals or food grades is the outer layer that is rich in thiamine, alright? So, yes, the rice that we have in exquisite cuisines, the polished rice, basmati rice, over there, the thiamine layer is basically washed out and it is also partially destroyed by heat, right? But don't worry, those who are consuming basmati rice day after day will not have thiamine deficiency disorders because it is not fully gone and moreover, there are other sources of vitamin B1 as well. But unpolished rice is much better source of thiamine. This you should remember. And regarding the structure of uh, thiamine, it's not a must-know thing, absolutely not. Uh, I will tell you what structure you need to remember in future videos. Exactly those videos will be what are the structures that, you, that are must know in biochemistry. But thiamine is not one of them. But you should at least know what is the structure. There is a pyrimidine ring and a thiazole ring. Okay, pyrimidine ring and a thiazole ring. This thia, thia that is present in the name means it contains a sulfur group. Right, so sulfur is present in the structure. That is important. At least this much you should remember. So sulfur, thia, and a pyrimidine. From there, ultimately we get thiamine. But just remember, thiazole ring or at least sulfur. Right, and uh, this enzyme is converted to its active form that is TPP or thiamine pyrophosphate by addition of two phosphate group. We'll be discussing that in detail very soon right so this is the reaction that i am talking about so addition of two phosphate group means atp will get depleted of two phosphate groups it will be converted to adenosine monophosphate and one pyrophosphate that is double p will be added to thiamine converting it to tpp or thiamine pyrophosphate this is the big structure which you do not need to know let me tell you you don't need to remember as an undergraduate first year medico right unless the question is very tough and you are appearing for pg then this structure might be given because nowadays image based questions are coming then you need to be aware but if you are studying for pg you are already well aware of what is thiamine right so you should have the basic idea anyways as an undergraduate medic you don't need to know thiamine structure just know ppp or the active first principle or the active form of the coenzyme vitamin b1 now there are two terms for the first time readers it may sound very confusing because they sound actually very similar thiamine is actually b1 right but thymine is present in dna it's a base okay adenine guanine thymine and cytosine atgc those are nitrogenous bases that are present in dna thymine and thiamine are not the same right you can say it very clearly thymine 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 you may get confused, but don't get confused, right? Anyway, so now we come to the most important part why we need to learn about thiamine. That is the active principle. And this will be asked in Viva. Very, very, very important. 
so right away you need to answer the active form of the coenzyme is thiamine pyrophosphate or tpp examiner will ask you okay what are the enzymes where tpp acts as cofactor right your first answer should be pyruvate dehydrogenase reaction because this is the first most basic reaction that you study after glycolysis so glycolysis pdh reaction krebs cycle so pyruvate to acetyl coenzyme a over there that enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase complex has got five cofactors and tpp is one of them right so mainly it is catalyzing a dehydrogenase reaction similarly in uh, the tca cycle alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase is another enzyme that also requires thiamine pyrophosphate right so apart from this so pdh and alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase it also plays a role in hmp shunt exos monophosphate shunt transketolase reaction extremely important so all these three reaction you need to remember okay see in hmp shunt there are very few things that you need to actually remember number one the two phases oxidative and non-oxidative phase what are the importance of hmp shunt and this one enzyme that is transketolase pathway and also glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase i'll be making a separate video about hmp shunt but just know this transketolase cannot be skipped out when you are being asked about thiamine and tpp right so we can see all the reactions of carbohydrate metabolism over here thiamine plays a main role okay so main role is in carbohydrate metabolism so a diet who, which is majorly based on carbohydrates will have much more recommended dietary allowance of thiamine means when we are taking in more carbohydrates we need to metabolize more carbohydrates by these pathways and so we need vitamin b1 more so uh, a human being who is taking more protein based diet over there even if thiamine is deficient it won't matter because there is no carbohydrate metabolism or minimal carbohydrate metabolism is going in their system right so just remember this line the requirement of thiamine is increased along with higher intake of carbohydrates okay so next we move on to the deficiency symptoms of thiamine and we know this we have read this since childhood thiamine deficiency vitamin b1 very very so yes it's fine examiner i think will not be going into details of beriberi unless you are a final year student and you are giving exam medicine exam right over there you need to know about beriberi at least you should know the various uh, features of beriberi one is dry beriberi dry beriberi means it affects the brain central nervous system right there will be no symptoms outside there will be no other swelling in the body only problem in the neural system but wet beriberi means there will be edema of the legs okay whole body will swell up the face and the legs those are the main features and in some cases infants who are born to mothers with existing vitamin b1 deficiency may land up with infantile beriberi in that case the baby will not sleep and will always be very restless so restlessness and sleeplessness are observed in case of infantile beriberi okay so next more important than beriberi is this one wernick korshakoff syndrome extremely important it will come in physiology in case of uh, central nervous system it will come in anatomy it will come in medicine as well so remember this thing mainly happens in alcoholics because alcohol inhibition i mean alcohol intake inhibits intestinal absorption of thiamine so this is the keyword you may have an explain why type of question chronic alcoholism leads to beriberi this is the answer right alcohol intake will not let the absorption of vitamin b1 in intestine and as a result the system will be vitamin b1 deficient and there will be all symptoms of vitamin b1 deficiency and specifically it leads to a condition where there will be problem in the eye muscles there will be abnormal movement of eye 
there will be imbalance due to cerebellar function loss of cerebellar function there will be madness okay so the first the milder one is known as wernick's encephalopathy and when it goes into madness stage it is known as korsakoff psychosis psychosis right so in all this there is a very fine line you may we will not be sure when the person was mild and when suddenly he has turned is behaving madly right so nowadays the function the symptom is combinedly called wernick korsakoff syndrome however as i say in some books it may be wernick encephalopathy and in some books it may be korsakoff psychosis written separately but both follows in chronic alcoholics and uh, this thing also leads to uh, polyneuritis means there will be i told you it affects cns so other peripheral nerves will also be affected there will be tingling numbness and all other neural symptoms there will be another explain why type of question that vitamin b1 deficiency leads to lactic acidosis now the answer is also simple i already told you in previous slide that the main function of thymine is to act as a coenzyme of pyruvate dehydrogenase complex as tpp right so if thymine is deficient pyruvate will not be converted to acetyl coa because pdh activity will be lowered so excess accumulation of pyruvate will lead to conversion of that pyruvate via the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase or ldh to lactate and that will lead to excess production of lactate and lead to lactic acidosis all right so remember thymine deficiency no pdh activity pyruvate accumulation activity of ldh or lactate dehydrogenase pyruvate converted to lactate and then it will lead to lactic acidosis so let us look how the features of beriberi looks like actually there are spottings all over the palm and there are horizontal ridges in nails you see these are the horizontal ridges as you can see in the picture i presume you will never see these uh, symptoms if you are posted in some big hospitals right however if you are posted in a peripheral hospital especially in villages where malnutrition still prevails you will see these features in kids of lower socioeconomic status of course if you visit any health center where malnutrition is still prevailing you will definitely get very very just inspect the nails everyone will have these ridges and the spots it is due to vitamin b1 deficiency now the last part of this uh, discussion so how will we diagnose this okay number one definitely the patient will have some symptoms right but even before the patient is having some symptoms you can actually diagnose this i know there will be no question of diagnosing because why will you run some tests unless a patient turns up with symptoms in india and all developing countries always the di diseases uh, are diagnosed in retrospective manner i mean that is what happens a patient will turn up to you with a disease then you run some test and then you can find the diagnosis so same all vitamin deficiency disorders it is the symptoms which will lead, which will lead to diagnosis however if you run if you strictly speak about biochemical parameters the idea is very simple the enzymes that are metabolizing with the help of metabolizing the various metabolites with the help of tpp will not be activated so those are pyruvate dehydrogenase alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase right so in ab in absence of all of them there will be excess accumulation of pyruvate there will be excess accumulation of alpha ketoglutarate there will be excess accumulation of lactate right so all these parameters will be increased right so it is very easy to explain see a blood level of thymine is reduced definitely because it is deficient but pyruvate alpha ketoglutarate and lactate all are increased also erythrocyte transketolase activity is reduced right this is the earliest manifestation seen even before clinical disturbances so very important first marker of thymine deficiency for pg mcq is transketolase activity reduction so if we study analyze the transketolase activity it will be reduced because transketolase that an enzyme of hmp shunt uses tpp as a cofactor and that enzyme is present in erythrocytes rbcs next uh, you may or may not choose to remember this because it's quite confusing remembering all the vitamins and their daily doses 
you need to literally revise before the day of exam however since the lecture cannot be complete without discussing the rds let me tell you it depends on the caloric intake i told you if you take more carbohydrate you will need more thiamine however roughly the requirement is 1 to 1.5 mg milligram per day thiamine has got therapeutic use what therapeutic use it is used to treat the diseases which is caused by thiamine deficiency so it is used to treat very very alcoholic polyneuritis and neuritis of pregnancies and old age so all of these have been found to be caused by vitamin b1 deficiency so we will treat these with dose of vitamin b1 so students this is it if you need to remember just few things from vitamin b1 let me recap very quickly uh, it is present it's a water soluble vitamin vitamin b1 present in the aluron layer of carbohydrates i mean rice it has got a thiazole ring which has got a sulfur the active principle is thiamine pyrophosphate okay tpp transferase is the enzyme which converts thiamine into its active principle it's different from thiamine next it's the cofactor of enzymes pyruvate dehydrogenase pdh alpha ketogenic dehydrogenase and transketolase those are mainly enzymes of carbohydrate metabolism and its deficiency symptom produces beriberi which may be either wet dry or infantile beriberi wernick korsakoff syndrome to explain why type of question why alcohol intake will produce wernick's encephalopathy or neuritis because alcohol inhibits b1 and why lactic acidosis because activity of pdh will be reduced in absence of thiamine and pyruvate will convert to lactate and this will lead to the various clinical features of beriberi which are horizontal ridges and spots erythrocyte level of transketolase activity rise is the first marker however other analytes that are metabolized with help of tpp cofactor that is pyruvate alpha ketoglutarate and their by products like lactate will be raised and lastly uh, the rda you may choose to forget however remember thiamine is used to treat vitamin b1 deficiency disorder that is very very alcoholic neuritis and other neuritis of pregnancy and old age so i hope you like this video remember you absolutely need to know these things without knowing these you cannot go to any exam even if you are a final year student at least this will help to pass you an exam and if you are undergraduate student of first year you will do very good by knowing this much in exam so feel free to get back to me with any queries in the comment section and i will continue with other vitamins in this lecture series till then bye and take care thanks for watching